So um, this recording, by the way, this will be recorded the entire time. Um, uh, as a reminder, this is the redevelopment uh, plan boundary area that we are working with. Um, so just to illustrate the boundaries for this, the north one is Maple Street. The southern boundary is Patrick Avenue and Burdett Street. The uh, eastern boundary is 20th Street. And the western boundary is Highway 75, um, 75 North. Um, so we have a, a pretty full agenda, but what is on the docket for the night? Um, we're going to start off by talking about why we need a redevelopment plan, what a redevelopment plan is. Um, the majority of our evening will be spent with property owners and developers telling us specifically about upcoming projects that they have within this boundary area. Uh, that'll probably take up the majority of our time. And then um, at the end, we'll talk about next steps and how to leave feedback. Um, we fully anticipate that there will be questions and comments throughout um, this presentation. Uh, we respectfully ask that you put all questions, comments in the various chat functions that we have. Um, everyone is currently on mute. We're gonna ask that you stay on mute for the duration of the presentation, just so we can uh, get through the several short presentations that we have. Um, at the end, we will try and answer as many questions as possible. Um, but if at, for some reason we cannot get to all of them by the end of by 8 p.m. when this meeting ends, any questions that have been unanswered in this session, we will um, save them all and be responding to them um, in a, uh, a typed up document that we will be sharing on the city planning website. And we will email it to everyone um, who has uh, provided their email by registering for this Zoom recording. Um, just as a, oops, just as a, a, a point so, so everyone knows all of the questions, everything in the chat um, for Zoom and um, in Facebook is going to be saved. Uh, and the responses to them will be put in the, um, in an addendum for the final plan. So if you're not familiar, the chat function in Zoom is gonna be at the bottom of your screen, um, this little chat icon, you click on it, type in your question or comment and we should all, uh, we'll all see it. If you're joining us um, via Facebook and Kelly, if, if you have access, could make sure that we're streaming on Facebook. Um, <laughs> we will, uh, uh, you'll be able to comment that way as well. And then, like I said, this is being recorded. When this is done, we'll be posting this online so you can um, see it after the fact. And we'll be taking your questions that way as well. Um, so just for the first item on our agenda, uh, Assistant Director of the Planning Department um, and the Community Development Division, Bill Lukash, is going to be sharing about what a, a redevelopment plan is, um, as well as uh, how it ties into Forever North. So I will play a video. Thank you for attending ending tonight's meeting to discuss a proposed redevelopment plan for the 24th and Lake Street area. Over the last few years, and with increasing frequency in the past year, the city has received requests from developers and property owners to support a variety of new projects in this area. These projects include housing, education, and economic development. One of the most common requests made to the city is for assistance with land assembly and assistance with zoning related issues. A redevelopment plan allows the city to take certain actions to provide this assistance. North 24th Street has a long and storied history in Omaha. This part of town was established well over 100 years ago and has seen substantial changes in that time. Over the years, land uses have changed, and this has created a checkerboard of uses near 24th and Lake Street. Some of these uses are not compatible with one another, or they don't meet the community's expectation of how this area should look in the future. In the picture shown at right, you can see there are general industrial uses, shown in blue, adjacent to residential uses, which are shown in brown. 
This is just one example of incompatible land uses in this area. In 2019, the city initiated the Forever North Housing and Multimodal Transportation Strategy for North 24th Street between Cumming Street and Ames Avenue. It builds upon previous plans such as the North Omaha Village Revitalization Plan, the Village Square Redevelopment Plan, Omaha's Historic Streetcar System Survey, and the Omaha Master Plan. One of the main goals of Forever North was to address current and future land uses in the North 24th Street Corridor. It provides guidance on what kinds of development neighborhood residents would like to see in their community while also meeting city regulations. Later this year, Forever North will be presented to the Omaha City Council to be included in the city's master plan. Forever North is not a redevelopment plan. In 2021, the city initiated the 24th and Lake Street redevelopment plan to support Forever North. This redevelopment plan will be the first city-initiated step taken to implement the Forever North strategy. Nebraska state law enables the city to create a redevelopment plan. The redevelopment plan allows the city to take a detailed look at current zoning designations and future land use within the redevelopment area. Also, through this state law, the city can transfer property for less than appraised value or acquire property under eminent domain. Eminent domain is the right of the city to acquire private property for public use with payment of compensation. These are important tools the city can use to support community development. When developers approach the city about their redevelopment proposals for a property, the city must evaluate if the project complies with the city's zoning regulations. If a developer proposes a land use that meets the current zoning code, then the project can move forward. If a developer proposes a land use that does not meet the current zoning code, then the developer must apply to have the zoning changed. Referring to the future land use map is the first step in determining if the proposed zoning change is appropriate. The future land use map prescribes how that property should be developed in the future. The planning department recommends approval or denial of zoning changes to the planning board, who then recommends approval or denial of the zoning changes to the city council. The city council are the final decision makers. Most zoning designations in the city have not changed since the adoption of the current zoning code in 1987. Additionally, a large portion of the city's future land use map has not been updated since the adoption of the Omaha Master Plan land use element in 1997. This can make the approval process for a development proposal more complicated. For example, at the northeast corner of North 24th and Lake Street is a parcel of land currently zoned LI. LI means Limited Industrial Zoning District. This zoning designation does not fit the anticipated land use, which is mixed use commercial and residential use, which is also the desired use for the area, as expressed by the community during the Forever North planning process. Although commercial use and associated parking is allowable under LI, residential use is not allowed. The future land use map in the Omaha Master Plan shows this property should have a civic use. Although this was desirable land use at one point, it limits the potential for redevelopment of the property. It is more restrictive than what was expressed by the community and does not fit the needs of the property owner. The conceptual future land use map presented in the Forever North strategy indicates this should be mixed use. Mixed use includes commercial, office, multifamily, and civic uses. In this example, the redevelopment plan directly supports the Forever North strategy by stating this partial should be mixed-use development. The development plan will inform the planning department on how to best guide development and zoning of the property. As previously stated, several redevelopment proposals have been discussed by a variety of property owners and stakeholders within the boundaries of the proposed redevelopment plan area. The first step in creating this redevelopment plan was to understand what property owners in the area have planned and what their needs are based on those plans. Often no changes are needed, but sometimes changes to zoning, the future land use designation, 
or assistance with property acquisition are necessary for projects to move forward. Stakeholder meetings were held with developers and property owners to better understand the complexities of their individual projects. Through these meetings, the city evaluates what can be done to support development. The next step is to explain to the public what the redevelopment plan is and why it is needed, to identify the goals of the plan and projects planned for the area, and to discuss steps the city can take once the redevelopment plan is in place. This is where we are tonight. Information gathered through this public engagement will further shape the redevelopment plan. The redevelopment plan is then presented to the Omaha Planning Board and the Omaha City Council for approval. It is entirely likely that this redevelopment plan and the future redevelopment plans will include a sunset clause that automatically retires the plan after a certain amount of time has passed. Here are some things the redevelopment plan does not do. The redevelopment plan does not provide blanket approval of individual projects proposed by developers. All projects must follow an approval process that flows through the Planning Department, the Omaha Planning Board, and then the Omaha City Council. Although the redevelopment plan provides guidance and structure to development in the area, it does not control the development of privately owned property. Development rights belong to the property owner, not the public. The redevelopment plan does not require community engagement by property owners and developers. There are several older redevelopment plans that cover all or parts of this area. The NOCD Community Development Plan was first passed by the Omaha City Council in 1975 and then was later amended in 1980 and amended three more times in 1981. The initial plan addressed public improvements such as sidewalks and street repair near 24th and Lake Streets, and it established a loan and grant program for housing rehabilitation. Later amendments to the plan shifted the target area and included site-specific activities such as removing a chain-link fence around the former Safeway building at 24th and Lake. The Long School Neighborhood Redevelopment Plan was approved by the Omaha City Council in 1999. The goals of this five to seven year plan included increasing the population base, encouraging investment in the neighborhood, and eliminating illegal activities within the Long School neighborhood and the area surrounding it. The plan called for sewer and street repair along with housing construction and financing to address these goals. The OIC Neighborhood Redevelopment Plan was passed by the Omaha City Council in 2007. The only purpose of this plan was to support single family residential development including 20 homeowner units and 20 rent-to-own units. So, although there are redevelopment plans in the area, none of them address what is needed today. This is why a new redevelopment plan is needed. Okay. Thank you, Bill's voice. He is on the call, uh, or he isn't with us now, but he was having Thank you. Uh, audio issues. So just to do a quick recap um, and talk about some things and uh, to keep a few things in mind as we're moving forward, just some big highlights from that. Um, this redevelopment plan is not complete. Um, there, we're still in the stages of, of drafting it and developing it. Um, that's why we're having outreach events like this and ones uh, in the future because public feedback is really necessary to make a great plan. Um, property owners have rights to develop on their property. Um, and this plan does not approve uh, any blanket approval uh, for any of the things that we're talking about tonight. Uh, there is no skipping the typical approval process just because these plans have been discussed or might be in the redevelopment plan. Um, there will be a separate approval process for each individual project. Uh, so what a redevelopment plan is, is really it's just supporting Forever North, which had really great community engagement and feedback. Uh, and this redevelopment plan is a response uh, for supporting active and potential developers in the area. Uh, one tool of that uh, type of support is for the city to be able to assemble and dispose of properties, which a redevelopment plan um, allows the city to do. And then finally, there are no city funds to, uh, proposed, connected to, or, or tied to this plan. 
However, the city would appreciate feedback on ways it could support development um, and area improvements. So that's the thing that we're definitely looking for um, in terms of feedback from people in the future. Um, so just as a reminder and recap, this is the redevelopment area. Uh, this is a map of the redevelopment plan area. Um, the parcels of land that are in that kind of peach shade um, are city owned properties that are currently undeveloped. Uh, the ones with green are uh, city owned properties that are developed in some capacity or are in use. Um, and then all of these light blue ones are ones that we're gonna hear about tonight from our separate property owners and developers. Um, so really excited to get to this. And with that, uh, I will turn it over to Ashley Kuhn who is representing um, Blair Freeman, the developer for North End Teleservices, uh, and unmute her. Good evening, can everybody hear me okay? Thumbs up, okay, good. Um, so uh, North End Teleservices is in the process of um, trying to acquire this site. It's currently owned by 75 North, who's taking care of the demolition of the existing building. Um, we did some assessments on the building uh, the building's been through so much mold, fire, roof leaks, um, and it really didn't meet the highest and best use of that corner. Um, so we've decided to take it down. North Intelligence Services will be building um, a mixed use development. Um, likely first and second floor would be office and retail space. Um, we'll have some food service, daycare, um, things like that that will be available for lease um, in that space, as well as North Intelligence Services moving into it. Um, we haven't started the formal development planning process of the site yet as they're waiting to acquire it first. Um, so super early in the process, um, but when they do um, purchase it, it'll be a three year process probably to get from start to finish. Um, and so that's the plan for that site. Awesome, thank you, Ashley. Uh, next up we have um, Pastor. Lassiter uh, for Mount Moriah Baptist Church, as well as uh, Chris Lenz um, supporting with uh, of Excel Development Group. I'll, I think Pastor Lassiter needed himself. Nice job. Thank you. All righty. Thank you. Uh, as you can see in the site plan in the middle of the screen uh, towards the bottom in red, you have Mount Moriah Church, which is on the corner of 24th and Ohio. Uh, immediately north is additional property, including our parking lot, but to the west of our parking lot, slightly less than an acre of land that we've owned for several years. Uh, and one of our uh, core missions for the church is to uh, address the housing uh, needs that exist uh, in North Omaha. And so uh, we've partnered with uh, uh, Excel Development uh, in order to develop a 40-unit uh, mixed income senior housing project. Uh, with a number of amenities. Uh, we're pretty close to moving forward with that project. Uh, Chris will talk a little bit about uh, uh, schedule and some other details. Thank you, Pastor. Um, as Pastor said, this is a mixed income 40 unit senior apartment building, uh, two and three bedrooms. There of the 40 units, there will be six market rate units. Uh, with no income restriction, restrictions and the uh, balance of the units will be split up uh, income driven for 40, 50 and 60% uh, area median income uh, seniors. We've received the tax credits from NIFA uh, in June. Uh, we also received a $750,000 grant from the Federal Home Loan Bank uh, Affordable Housing Program um, so that all of our funding is in place. Uh, the plan right now is to close by the end of the year uh, with all the funding partners and we'll start construction just as soon as we can in the spring. And it's about a almost $6 million project. Okay, uh, our next project, we're referring to it as Mariah Center. It's not quite as far along in the uh, development process uh, as Mariah Manor, uh, but uh, as you can see from the illustration at the bottom of the page, uh, Mount Mariah currently owns a property 
on the east side of 24th Street on the corner of 24th and Ohio. Uh, you can see it's this uh, area down there. Uh, and uh, what we are uh, looking at development is a mixed use development uh, on the lower level uh, with five uh, commercial spaces, uh, one of which uh, being a, uh, a food space uh, with four additional retail spaces. Uh, and then above uh, that lower level, uh, 30 uh, mixed income apartment units, uh, as you can see some two bedroom and some one bedroom. Uh, our desire is that at least 50% of the apartment homes uh, would be market rate, again, to address the need uh, for uh, reasonable housing uh, for young professionals. So uh, that's where we are uh, with that particular project. Great, thank you. Um, up next is uh, the Array Group LLC. Miranda Adams could not be here with us this evening, but um, it's going to read a little bit about her two projects within this area. Um, 2306-2308 North 24th Street, these two on the left-hand side here. Um, they are currently under construction. They will be two retail bays that will be white boxed and leased for uh, two businesses and it's anticipated to be completed by the end of this year. Um, 2323 North 24th Street up here on the corner of 24th and Willis. Um, is currently home to Idle Vital Living Foods, which is a drive-through business that makes and sells health and wellness foods, uh, such as cold pressed juices and smoothies. Um, in the future, the owner of the property, the Array Group anticipates repaving the lot around the building um, to accommodate uh, customers for the current tenants of both this property and the ones across the street. Um, so pending tenant and landlord approval, the lot may be utilized as parking for um, surrounding businesses as well. Um, next, we have Dana Murray uh, from North Omaha Music and Arts Academy. Hi, everyone. Can everybody hear me? Excellent. Well, I'm Dana Murray, and uh, I am excited uh, to be starting a youth music and arts academy in the North Omaha, in the North Omaha community. Uh, I am from Omaha, um, spent most of my adult life living in New York as a full-time uh, musician. And really what motivated me to do this was uh, creating something that I wish I had uh, growing up. You know, I grew up in a boys and girls club and it was uh, a beautiful experience, but what they didn't have a lot of uh, was uh, things to be involved in that surrounded music. So I was always looking elsewhere, whether it be school or uh, anything outside of that. Um, knowing the rich history of uh, North Omaha, it is really my dream to not only affect North Omaha, but affect the entire music scene. You know, I've done enough education in this city at this point to know how quickly they grow up. So uh, yeah, NOMA will be um, all encompassing. We will offer uh, most instruments uh, outside of strings. Uh, we'll offer dance. Uh, will offer a number of things revolving around uh, electronic uh, recording, uh, engineering, uh, really meeting kids where they are today. You know, um, education itself uh, as a curriculum based endeavor hasn't changed in probably over 200 years or so. Uh, we are trying to um, meet kids where they are and uh, offer progressive means of music education. Um, we're very early on in the process, but in that time, you know, uh, we've had to file for our 501c3. Did that about four months ago. So we're hoping that'll be in by the first of the year. Um, we secured an architect who's already come up with some uh, initial plans, which if you've driven by the, the building, you can see those on the windows. 
Uh, we have our branding uh, together. We have a website, we have our Facebook page, and we're at this point uh, about to start our capital campaign uh, as much as we can do uh, without having obviously the 501c3 uh, status secured. But a um, lot of stuff is happening. Uh, most of my days, I like to say, are uh, at this point are spent shaking hands and kissing babies uh, because most of what I've um, most of what I've really been aggressively doing is making those relationships, uh, making those connections, uh, knowing that you know the more that we as a community, uh, meaning the stakeholders, you guys, me. Uh, work together, um, the better all of us are, you know, the more all of us are going to benefit from that. So that's really where I am at the moment. And uh, there's a lot of stuff that is happening, and we will be uh, bringing that to you guys real soon. Great. Thank you, Dana. Thank you. Um, see? Up next is Brigitte McQueen, she's the executive director for the Union of Contemporary Art. And Brigitte, if you just want to let me know when you want me to do the next slide, because um, you have a few in here, and I will unmute you where you got it. Thank you so much. Um, hi, good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Brigitte. I am the AD at the Union for Contemporary Art. Um, our main facility is currently located at the intersection of 24th and Lake in the Blue Lion building. Um, and I wanted to share a little bit with you this evening about a project that we are really proud of um, that we are working on, which is the creation of a new um, studio theater building, which will sit just to the south of our property um, in the old Simple Simon daycare, um, daycare building. Um, and if we could go to the next slide. Um, so this is just to give you a sense of the property. Um, again, the Union, the Blue Lion building would sit just above this at the top of your screen. Um, the existing building um, is shown and then there is a vacant lot um, that we also were able to acquire um, that sits right behind this building to the east. And so our plan for this, the current building is about 4,000 square feet. Um, we will be adding new construction in addition onto this building to expand the footprint of the building to just under 10,000 square feet. Um, can I get the next slide? Thank you. So this is a drawing of the interior of the, the new building <laughs> that we're working on. Um, right now, our performing arts program is housed in one room um, at the building. It was never really properly set up to be a theater. When we acquired the building, I think that it had used to have been a mechanics shop. Um, so this is an incredible step forward for our performing arts program. Um, the building will have a proper lobby. Um, the walls um, on the north side of the building will mostly be replaced with glass. Um, we will have the lobby, a rehearsal space, um, a small catering space so that we can do events and rent out the rehearsal space uh, to our community partners and others. Um, the theater proper, our current theater has capacity only for about 40 patrons. Um, the new theater will be able to sit 90 to 100 depending upon configuration and it will be a proper black box theater, meaning that it will not have a set stage. Um, it will be extremely flexible to meet the needs of the program. Um, behind the theater space, um, which continues the new build, um, we're putting in a proper scene shop um, and dressing rooms, uh, restrooms, and a small if lift elevator that will take you to, next slide, the second floor. Um, so the new construction that we are doing will be two-story construction. Um, so we will have a proper control room to do sound, lighting, design, all of that in the right way, um, a storage area, and a costume shop. Next slide, please. And this is uh, in progress rendering of what the finished building will look like. Um, so we will be maintaining the west and the south facade of the current building. Unfortunately, the north side of the building has sustained so much water damage over the years that it is not savable. So we will again be replacing that with glass. Um, we're still working through the color palette for the two new um, uh, 
new construction aspects of the building, the scene shop and the theater proper. Um, the project is coming in at about $6 million. Um, we have started fundraising. Um, we are on track to start construction at the beginning of 2022 with an anticipated end date being um, the end of year, December, January, uh, end of 2022, beginning of 2023. Thank you. Thank you, Brigitte. All right. Um, next up, we have Manny Cook, the program manager from Spark CDI. Uh, Manny, and I'm already unmuted. Yeah. yeah. So nice I'm actually the urban development manager, but you know, program manager that that works too. You're um, Mr. In charge. Sorry. <laughs> you're all good. Um, so yeah, um, this is our team. I know you know. Uh, a lot of people know me, maybe, um, but not a lot of people might know other people are on our team. So I just wanted everyone to be able to see who all is on our team. Um, but next slide, we'll start talking about some of the things that we're up to. Um, North Omaha Trail Project. So this project is just under $2 million project that is going to be a walking, running, scooting, biking trail. Uh, you know, it's going to incorporate a lot of public art like uh, the mural that we just completed at Bud Crawford's gym. Um, and this will run, this first phase will run from 31st and Sprague where Bud Crawford's gym is to 24th in Ohio. Um, next slide. And then the fat fabric project, which is, um, 2514 to 2520 North 24th Street. So just uh, north of Mona um, or Noma, sorry. Uh, and uh, just south of Mount Moriah. Um, we have completed the rehab of four of the commercial bays and um, Styles of Evolution is still uh, occupying one of those. Um, North End Teleservices has moved into one of the spaces. Uh, Stable Gray has moved into another. Um, and then we're working on another project fabric lab, which I'll get to here in a moment um, in the last space, but um, we're also working on the final building on the end with the mural on it where um, uh, Styles of Evolution will move into um, and then there'll be three apartments on the upper level, um, which are going to be geared to our artist creatives um, and we're expecting for that to be completed uh, next fall around this time so. Next slide. So Fabric Lab, we had the other space uh, open and what we're gonna do with that is kind of organically turn it into an urban design lab and really focusing on urban design, planning, architecture, uh, and then you know, enhancing that knowledge within the North Omaha community um, and with a specific focus on black architects, planners, and designers. Um, it's community space for supporting small businesses and um, we want it to be a hub for, you know, launching urban development projects throughout Omaha. Next slide, please. And then I just threw these in here because these are other things that we're doing at Spark. So uh, we have the Developer Academy. So we're talking about all this development. And one thing that we do at Spark is have a Developer Academy. So if you want to learn how to Become a developer if you're uh, already pretty much a developer, but you want to uh, get some more insight and perspective and gain some resources. I see quite a few people here in this meeting that are some of our um, former graduates of the Developer Academy. And we have our next session coming up here in October and we'll have another one in the spring. Um, so I'll drop some information in the chat here in a little bit if you're interested in that. Um, and What's the next slide? I don't remember. Oh yeah, uh, we have a loan fund. So for developers and other folks who are interested uh, in becoming developers, um, one thing that we've noticed is uh, in North Omaha and South Omaha and other areas that uh, haven't seen development in quite some time or significant development, that there's gaps in financing. Um, so we have a loan fund which helps address that. So as these projects are going on or new projects come together, um, you can reach out to us and we might be able to help in that way. Um, and out of the 4.5 million that we've raised for this uh, loan fund, 2 million is from the uh, Missing Middle Workforce Housing Fund from the state, uh, which we're looking to support development uh, you know, in, 
in North and South Omaha, but uh, particularly North Omaha. In fact, uh, I know Donnell is here on this call and he's a former uh, developer academy graduate and we're looking at a few properties on Ohio Street as well. So just wanted to get that shout out for the public record so it's out there. Um, and next slide. That might be it. Or Mariana might have frozen. One of the things happened. So while we're waiting for her to come back, I'm going to drop. Oh, there she is. Oh, right. I forgot all about this. So um, right now we're working on a project. If you go back to the Common Ground project, um, we are going to be, uh, well, I'll say uh, working with the community. So I'm going to drop a sign up sheet in the chat as well. Um, for anyone who wants to be a part of the Common Ground project, where we are going to be working on some public art projects, specifically a seed archive uh, for you know storing seeds for the next season for all the gardens in the community, but also as part of that, incorporating a seed or oral archive um, and creating a public art piece out of the whole project as well. Um, and then the last slide, I know I have all these slides, I'm taking up everyone's time, but um, uh, Clarice, who's our urban development uh, intern, uh, manages and runs the garden on 24th and Pratt, and there's a harvest part or harvest fest here, uh, second on October 2nd. So uh, everyone's invited to that as well. Um, and I'll just drop my contact information and sign up sheet uh, for anyone who wants to be involved in anything that we're doing. Thanks. Thank you, Manny. Apologies to anyone. I, my internet connection got a little unstable. Hopefully that doesn't happen again. Um, next up, we've got Ben Swan from Swan Development to talk about the Carnation Ballroom. Thank you, Mariana. Good evening, everyone. Ben Swan with Swan Development. Uh, can you hear me? Yep. So we restore smaller human scale uh, historic buildings built between 1900 and the early 1950s. The Carnation Ballroom, uh, we acquired around four years ago, got it uh, nominated and appointed as a local landmark. And currently what we're doing is a stabilization phase where we're putting on new roofs, uh, taking down the trusses on the north building and putting a new structural uh, ceiling and then a roof on top of that. Uh, took out the concrete floors, taking out two of the east walls. So it's uh, way beyond taking this building down to the studs. We're doing a lot of structural repair and weatherproofing, a lot of tuck pointing and repair of the building. We do have a glass facade on part of the building. And then on the other part of it, we're doing a polycarbonate temporary product that'll allow light in and will allow the building to kind of look similar to what it'll look like when there's an entire glass facade. What we eventually want to do is have a flexible commercial space for up to five tenants, uh, as, as few as one and up to five. Uh, currently, we're looking for prospective tenants to uh, be users of the space. Um, we've got a parking lot to the east of the building, uh, immediately behind it, that we've done some uh, grading work on. And we do have uh, access from that future parking lot uh, on both the north building and the south building. That's where we're at. Thank you, Ben. Thank you. All right. Um, next up, we have Annette Arthurton from uh, Omaha Economic Development Corporation. I believe I spelled your name wrong on the slide. I'm sorry, but I will turn it over to you. At, uh, can you hear me? OK. Um, most people do leave out the R and that's fine. Um, I just wanted to tell everyone um, how excited I am to see all of these concept projects. It's exactly what this corridor needs. And tonight, uh, Michael is out of town. So he had asked me to uh, talk about a couple of our projects that we have either in the current design phase or at concept development. So our first one um, is the large parcel that you see 
down in the lower right hand side. This is 2430 Patrick Avenue, but it also involves um, space that property that we have um, that is directly across the street from it. This is part of the um, proposal that we had sent submitted to the Department of Economic Development for its middle income workforce housing project. Uh, we did receive an allocation and along with philanthropic funding, we have about $2 million to construct up to possibly six or seven homes, depending upon how uh, we can replat, particularly the larger parcel. Um, and then um, at the present time, we have also hired a consultant who is actually doing some of the site analysis for us and some potential concept designs that we hope to be taking to the city here. We hope to be under construction by early spring of 2022. Um, and the goal is again to create six to seven new single family homes within this area. Next slide. So another piece of how we are trying to knit together more um, of the parcels that we currently own around the Fair Deal Village Marketplace and the senior development that um, are located between Patrick or Blondo and uh, uh, Burdett Street is we have several commercial properties that are currently vacant. We are looking to um, build a concept plan a condition assessment report and a probable cost report. Uh, and hopefully that will occur in the next six to nine months. And then the last slide. OEDC also owns a substantial uh, parcel that lies just south of Custom Tile. I don't know how many of you are familiar with that area, but it's 24th and Blondo. Currently we are in a, um, period of discussing with potential consultants who would build for us a concept design again for a mixed use development that would go on that site um, with market rate apartments on the top and commercial spaces on the bottom. Um, hopefully we'll have CD by either the end of this year or early next year, and it would be under construction and completely developed, hopefully by the end of 2024. Thank you, Annette. I apologize. I think the slide speaking to that project got cut out of this somehow, but um, we will That's be okay. sure to, yeah, we'll, we'll put some information up. Okay. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. um, up next, uh, we have Holy Name Housing Corporation. Um, I think Matt is on the call. Matt Cavanaugh. Maybe not. So if he's not, um, and he's not, I'm happy to uh, share on their project. So Holy Name Housing Corporation owns some properties down there at North 26th and Grant Street between, or 20, 26th Street between Grant and Burdett. Um, let me make sure I get the right information. Um, they intend to build three single family detached homes on their parcels within the property area. Um, these are, are drawings that Holy Name shared with us. Um, so as with most of their projects, these three homes will have uh, single family detached affordable housing units. Um, and uh, construction should be completed by the end of 2020. Okay, um, next we have uh, Willie Barney and the Carver Legacy Center. And I'll let him take it away. Right. You can hear me okay? Yes. Great, uh, thank you for the opportunity. And as Annette said, we're very excited to see the amazing developments happening uh, around 24th and Lake. Uh, for those that don't know, in a different capacity, we've been very involved uh, with the village revitalization plan with OEDC and others. So one of the goals was for 24th and Lake and that plan to be a catalyst. Uh, what you see here on the business side, my wife and I eight years ago started the Revive Black Business Network. One of the things we heard consistently was uh, lack of access to credit and capital. 
So about four years ago, we started to have conversations about uh, bringing a financial institution down to 24th and Lake. Um, had a chance to talk with uh, John and Wendy Katosh at American National Bank, uh, Pastor Martin Williams and Linnell Williams. Uh, we were com having conversations about some other development projects and we started to realize we had a common vision for a black owned financial institution. So we're very excited. A year ago, we announced the Carver Legacy Center in the past year. Uh, we have been conducting a soft opening uh, and we're very excited to see the progress that's being made. You can turn to the next slide. So again, we are a black owned financial institution um, in the same center that 77 years ago, the Carver uh, Savings and Loan Association was launched. It closed in 1965. So we are here to reestablish that center. The past year, uh, we have invested $100,000 in renovations. You can see some of the enhancements that have been made on the interior and exterior. Um, and we also, as a reminder, there are four key components for Carver. There's a financial institution in partnership with American National Bank. There's an accelerator hub that focuses on black businesses, a retail incubator and small store where the Big Mama's location once was. And then we also have wealth building classes inside the building. Uh, next slide. Uh, to the upper left there, you can see some of the renovations that have been done, as I mentioned before, interior painting, uh, the desks and furniture are in place. Uh, there's uh, meeting room facilities, there's an incubator space in the back, and then the retail location will be continuing to work on and have some ideas uh, going forward. As I mentioned, uh, myself and my wife Yolanda, along with Martin and Linnell Williams, are the owners of the Carver Legacy Center, partnering with the American National Bank. There's a number of people, Ernest White, Ryan Meyer, Lloyd Lewis, and Jim Burns from American National Bank, which are ambassadors. Uh, we have been um, bringing in deposits. You can make deposits um, and open accounts at any American National Bank around the city. Uh, we have some major updates that will be coming here in the next 30 days, including a grand opening. One of the things regarding development, we are looking at where on the facility uh, we can add a, an ATM, because that is actually one of the reasons we started as well, uh, lack of an ATM and access to financial institution there at 24th and Lake. So we're happy about that. Uh, we have walked through our process with our partners of being able to process business loans and home loans, and we'll have more on that. We have been able to uh, help a number of businesses over the last year get started and work through our process. And so we're very excited. We're excited to be a part of what's happening at 24th and Lake and really all throughout North Omaha. Again, switching gears, uh, Revive Center is a separate business that is owned uh, by my wife and I, uh, Willie and Yolanda. And we are actually in the Lake Point building, which is owned by Family Housing Advisory Services. I think the CEO, Teresa Hunter, is on. The Revive Center actually opened two years ago, uh, right in the midst of Native Omaha days. We were open for about nine months and actually ended up closing because of COVID uh, and the pandemic. Uh, we have started a slow reopening here the last few months. Uh, if you go uh, to the next slide. The Revive Center is focusing on events, market, and food. So we have concerts, uh, we have food available for lunch, we'll have special events in the evening, and then on Saturdays we have a marketplace where primarily small Black-owned businesses will have a chance to introduce and market their products. Um, next slide. Uh, we're excited in that we've been working really hard to provide a platform for African-American-owned businesses and also entrepreneurs uh, that are in the food business. We have four that are working with us right now. Darnell, who does uh, our Champions Cafe, is open during lunch. Linda McClenney, uh, who helped us restart as well. Uh, she does uh, specialty foods, home style cooking. Wes, who's been with us for the last couple of months, he does pasta, seafood, and grits bowls, including shrimp and grits. And we're excited to have uh, Chef Jamil come back. He was with us during Native Omaha days. He'll be rejoining us in September for fine dining in the evenings uh, at the Revive Center. So just wanted to give folks an update. Uh, we want uh, One of our goals is to bring uh, different food options to the 24th and Lake area. And we really appreciate the amazing support that we received from our partners in the neighborhood. I think the last slide just gives the hours for the Revive Center. All right, thank you. I think that's it.
Yes, thank you so much, Willie. Okay, um, next we have uh, Mike Masick from Jesuit Academy. I think he has unmuted himself. Uh, yep, okay, I'll let you go. Hi, greetings everyone. Great to be here with you. Uh, it's certainly an honor and privilege to uh, be in the community and serve Jesuit Academy as uh, their president. You know, we're uh, in the very front end stages of a lot of planning uh, for the property to the west of us uh, across uh, 22nd Street and between Grant and Willis, as well as directly to the north of us on our side where the school resides uh, on that side of the property. Uh, our intent is to improve the uh, delivery of our education to our students. You know, some considerations, again, very front end planning phase is uh, to improve some recreation space so our kids can um, exercise outside uh, in even in cold weather. So maybe some, uh, you know, parking lot uh, areas um, for our students and faculty uh, to park, but, and, uh, you know, some basketball courts some play areas, as well as improve where we're in a very tight space for our cafeteria and it uh, acts as common space. And we want uh, a better uh, presentation uh, for our students to enjoy their meals, both breakfast as well as lunches. We're looking at an improved uh, multimedia center, uh, you know, the old days of the library, uh, some STEAM space uh, as well, some modern um, tools that our students can learn with. And then just some meeting space, uh, office space and meeting space. All this, uh, you know, even to potentially consider, you know, an expansion of enrollment as well. But, you know, we're, we're very early. It's gonna take a year to uh, run through a process to engage board members and community members. We'll take probably another year and a half to uh, fundraise. So we're looking, you know, uh, about a three year project, um, you know, in, getting this uh, concept developed and then, um, you know, there's some of the space uh, designed. Uh, we're uh, school four through eighth grade, all male. Uh, we have an extended day, an extended year, as well as grad support services that follow our students, um, you know, when they leave us in eighth grade and then even uh, after high school. So it's, it's exciting to see all this uh, development, all the ideas and all the dreams come true for North Omaha. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Mike. Okay, um, after that, we have Bishop Shannon with uh, Greater St. Paul Ministries and Chris Lenz of Excel Development supporting him. Okay, thank you. Uh, as you can see uh, from the first slide, uh, our contribution uh, to the North Omaha development uh, process is of course, uh, senior affordable housing. Uh, and it has been our vision and our passion to make sure that our seniors in North Omaha are not left out and certainly not with all the things we're doing, uh, which is exciting, uh, but uh, housing, affordable housing uh, is, uh, as most of us do know, uh, is in tremendous need in North Omaha. Uh, what you see here uh, is, uh, I believe, as is indicated in the bullet points, the properties that we do own between Maple and Miami Street. And uh, that property uh, is uh, designed for phase one, uh, to construct about 10 to 11 duplexes for, for uh, seniors that, uh, that qualify uh, and that age is 55 and up. Uh, I think the next slide would be, if you can, I don't know if you can see the finished product in the end there, Mariana. I think we missed that. Uh, but there is a slide that shows what these four plexus look like. Uh, we found out this has been well received uh, by our seniors because it includes a living room, a small dining room area, uh, a laundry room with, with both washer and dryer, 
uh, garage, all physically challenged, accessible, uh, and it gives the uh, it gives the strong uh, feeling of being in a single family housing home. So uh, we found these to be very acceptable, and they look great. Uh, I didn't see the slide there that showed what the finished product looked like. Uh, ne next slide to, that uh, also indicates uh, the properties, this slide as well as I think the last slide, I don't know the last slide looks like, but the properties that we're acquiring and seeking to acquire has to do with other community projects that are going on uh, in North Omaha as well. So we're seeking more uh, land uh, that would also include phase two and phase three. Uh, to help handle this large need for affordable senior housing. Uh, of course, uh, as everyone uh, begins to move forward with their plans uh, and other lands are acquired, uh, then hopefully we can move in and be somewhat adjacent or partner with those other facilities to help make this project happen. Uh, and on the basis of the fact that, again, I repeat that is is such a large need for it. Uh, I think the last slide. Okay. Uh, again, this is the uh, reason why we feel this is uh, important. The growing need for affordable senior housing. Again, as I've uh, mentioned, uh, this happens to be our vision and our mission, and it definitely is our passion. Uh, we believe that these these wonderful people who worked hard. Uh, and uh, the uh, all our youth uh, uh, have built their lives upon the backs of these who have been a part of North Omaha for years, who want to remain in North Omaha. So we feel we have a knowledgeable team, the experience, we've done this before, and uh, the community has found that we are trusted to do what we say we're going to do, and that what we're doing is for their best interest. Um, Without the slide of the finish uh, four plexes, then uh, that's all I have to add to that tonight. Okay. okay, thank you. Sorry about that. Yeah, sorry. Uh, we will put the slide with the finished four plexes in the after materials for sure. All right. Um, so next up. Uh, RH land management. So a representative from RH could not um, be with us tonight. Sherry Lecce, the uh, manager is actually out of town, but we had the opportunity to speak with them. Um, so RH owns several parcels within the boundary area. Um, they are looking for people to partner with to use the land productively uh, in a way that's beneficial to the neighborhood. Um, Sherry had left her, her contact information um, for us and strongly encourage anyone who is interested in um, using uh, a parcel that might belong to RH land management to reach out to her um, directly. So it's um, slechy at rhland.com. Again, this will be um, posted and shared so that if you need to access that later, you can. Um, up next also is Habitat for Humanity. So um, I'll speak to this one, but I know I believe Drew Lear is also on the call if there are questions for him. Um, so Habitat does have claims, Habitat for Humanity of Omaha has claims to several properties throughout the area. Um, at this time, they don't have any confirmed plans for those properties. Uh, but they are likely going to be used for residential homes. Um, if you have any questions about that, um, Dan Brewer and Drew Lear are both made themselves available to answer those questions. Um, and the, Drew, uh, Drew's contact information will be in this slide, I think. And if he's available, he could maybe put it in the chat as well. Lastly, I know Shannon Snow from the Omaha Municipal Land Bank is on this call. Yeah. Um, great, I'll let you go ahead. So I'm gonna apologize. I am not gonna turn on my camera. I'm having some connectivity issues. So if I uh, pop out, uh, feel free to jump back in where I left off. But um, 
So the I am the executive director at the Omaha Municipal Land Bank, and we are a quasi-governmental 501c3, and we acquire vacant abandoned dilapidated properties through Omaha. The majority of our properties have been rejected by the free market um, many, many years in a row, typically because of liens or encumbrances that make them undesirable for the private market. We have I call it a magic wand. It's a board resolution where we can make many of these encumbrances go away um, and make these properties again um, marketable. We do have several properties within the redevelopment area. We are not a developer. Um, so that being said, we don't necessarily have current plans for all of the properties. There are several of you on this call that are um, adjacent property owners, and we're working closely with um, many of you to make sure that those properties can support the developments that you have in the works. Um, for the rest of them, we are going to be looking to the city, to many of you, um, as well as the community to identify the highest and best use for the parcels. I want to note that these parcels currently are not listed for sale on our website. It is likely they will go through a slightly different process than our typical disposition. And that process will include um, some additional evaluation for what is truly best for the community. Um, I also want to stress one thing I see, you know, the comments about supporting people uh, within the neighborhood. So the land bank has been going through um, some changes over the last year and one of the things we did in april we've we've always had the ability to prioritize uh community plans affordable housing th those types of things that really um really fit our nonprofit partners well when we were going through our um our reorganization we felt very strongly that a group was missing and that group was the uh community members. So we passed policies that now allow us to consider a, a buyer um, within a historically redlined community equal to any other, any other user. And so as we think about the disposition of property in this area, we're going to be looking for that sustained wealth building, those opportunities for um, you know, the, lo the local developers, the, the developers from the historically red lines communities, you know, we're going to be looking pretty closely to identify those opportunities to keep the wealth um, with, with the residents of that area. So I just want to point that out specifically, that that will be a consideration um, in our disposition of property. Um, and we are, um, we're going to be very careful to, you um, dispose of our properties in a manner that supports all the plans that you've all discussed today. Let me know if you have questions. That's all I got. <laughs> I appreciate that, Shannon. That was really uh, extremely helpful. Um, okay, so um, Lastly, uh, this city obviously owns several properties within the area, um, within that boundary. So if anyone on this call or anyone ever has questions about um, acquiring city property, um, Autumn Evans is our... Uh, if if you are interested, uh, I think my camera might have my internet might have gotten a little unstable. This is at your disposal. Uh, if you've got questions, please reach out to her. Okay. Um, so then the next step here um, is really just about getting community feedback. Um, so. We appreciate everyone taking the time to come to this virtual meeting. Uh, we'll have several opportunities for you to leave comments um, in person and online as well. So 
uh, first off will be um, office hours at the Fabric Lab um, that Manny actually told us about. So 2514 North 24th Street, um, Kelly, Johnston, Dorsey, and I will both be at um, the Fabric Lab on, I believe it's Tuesday, September 7th from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. to And, and then um, September the 10th, which is a Friday afternoon from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m to answer any questions or take any comment that you might wanna leave in person. Um, we're hoping this will be, this small group opportunity will allow for some good in-depth conversation and also be safe um, given the COVID situation. Um, tomorrow, uh, our tiny URL to we uh, go to this tiny URL link, um, which will take you to a Google form to leave comments uh, or questions about the um, plan. Uh, you can also access this, um, the link, the Google form through the city planning website. Uh, the link is in here. Um, the, and that's will be on the neighborhood planning page specifically. Um, that's part of the community development division. And then you can always call or email me um, if you've got comments or questions. I would love to be able to speak with you. Um, so again, my name is Mariana Forall, uh, and you can reach me at the phone number on the screen. Four, uh, I guess for anyone who is on the phone right now, it's 402-444-5150, extension 2030. My email address is uh, M-A-R-I-A-N-N-A -N -N dot F, as in Frank, O-R-A-L at cityofomaha.org. Uh, um, and it looks like we have a bit of time for questions um, to get to. So um, any, again, as a reminder, anything that we don't get to in this conversation um, tonight, we are keeping track of all of these questions. They're gonna be saved and there will definitely be written responses to them. We will get them up on the neighborhood planning website and emailed to each one of you um, who has joined us through the registration. We'll have your emails um, individually and we'll get through that as soon as possible. Um, Kelly, do you feel like you can direct us to what one of the first questions should be, or should I maybe take a stab at it? <laughs> Thanks, Mariana, and everyone who presented today. Really great to hear everything that's going on. One of the questions we received earlier uh, was with regard to the construction development going on. What has been done to include contractors from the area, North Omaha? other than businesses that are on this call. What is the plan to bring jobs to the current residents living in North Omaha? Any requirement to have underemployed residents employed with firms doing the developing, building, and so forth? So I would like to put this out there for anyone who presented during the call. If you're working on this um, or have feedback in terms of how your, how your private development is responding to this, I think that would be a great, um, offer great insight into that question. So I'll turn it over to see if anyone has um, you know, an example or something that they've been doing within the community. I saw, I'm not sure if this ties directly, Kelly, but this is Willie um, from Carver. I believe uh, Martin Williams is also on one of our partners, but one of the reasons we set up the Carver was to do exactly that, to support um, African-American owned and North Omaha entrepreneurs with business development, home ownership. And so we've worked with a number already through our partnerships and very open to that as well as we've been very intentional about working with uh, businesses, even in our uh, renovations and rehabilitation uh, at the at the Carver as well. So uh, looking to tie that closer and with our partners would be very, very interested. I mentioned it to Shannon and helping to support financing and helping to create employment opportunities with any of the projects that have been identified. Uh, this is and I'm also going to reference um, that chat that we're having that you can all view. I think uh, the question that was asked is very relevant. People sometimes think the land bank is a financial institution. We are not. We, um, we are uh, really focusing our resources on, on providing property at an accessible um, sort of level. For, for people and, and not overcharging and, and doing those types of things. Um, but we are not able to provide financing. We are, as you'll see in the chat, we will be talking to Willie and working very closely to see if we can 
identify some funding sources. Um, and those are conversations that we have with our banking partners on a very regular basis. So we um, are committed to helping people find the financing and the resources that they need to develop our properties. But we, we are not a financial institution, which is a sometimes confusing with our name. We're also not the city, which is also confusing with the municipal, but um, uh, just to clarify that. So. And I'll, I'll just chime in real quick on the financing. Uh, again, we have a, a loan funds specifically for developers. Uh, so I think, you know, you could get a couple sources. It sounds like you could get some from us, some from, from Willie, and then, you know, uh, maybe that's all you need, or maybe, you know, go to a traditional bank and that sort of thing. That's usually how it works, putting together capital stack. So um, there's two resources right on 24th street. Three, Omaha 100 would also be able to assist with the financing um, for those type of loans. We should say too that Melinda is the new deputy executive director for Omaha 100. And so Omaha 100 has been working with um, trying to make sure that we have those types of um, monies available so that not only can people become homeowners and we have worked with in partnership with both the Land Bank and with um, Willie as well or the Carver in helping people become homeowners. But the other side of this is that um, we're trying to make sure that we have funds available for people who would be, want to become developers. And we've done that in partnership with the city as well with their rental rehab program that has provided dollars so that if a person wanted to um, rehab or renovate a place that we would have the dollars available. So those are some things that we have done as well. Awesome, thank you so much everybody uh, for chiming in. I turned my camera off because I'm also having some connectivity issues and trying to uh, make sure that I don't drop this um, phone call. So I think the next question that I see in the chat um, is does the city own the OOIC building? Um, so I, I think it's been addressed later in the chat. Oh, yes, it has. Uh, but suffice to say, it's a legal matter um, that the city is no longer involved in or is not involved in right now. Um, Kelly, do you want to add anything to that? I, I don't, I think that's kind of like in limbo right now, as far as I know. Yeah, so the city owns part of the property, not all of the property and not the building at all. Um, so and I think Bill had put in the chat that the, the sale of the building has not gone through at this point to our knowledge. Um, so uh, that's the limited information we have right now. Um, it, as soon as we know more, we can definitely share that. But city owns just one parcel that the entire building is on, not the entire property, and don't have any ownership in the building. So is the OIC, OOIC board uh, in the state who are working through that process. Great. Um, let's see. Build on OOIC. I'm sorry, I'm just scrolling through the questions. We talked about financing. We talked a lot about OOIC. Um, are the boundaries set for the redevelopment plan? Kelly, do you want to take that one? Yeah, so and I think um, Bill had chimed in on this a little bit as well. The, the, the boundaries are proposed at this point. They're not hard boundaries, but it's difficult to kind of draw the lines, um, as you can imagine, with so much going on. Um, so we tried to figure out, you know, where the best concentration is, not getting too far out from kind of the epicenter of this uh, cross section here at 24th and Lake, and falling, you know, where the large developments are happening, and also with the city-owned property, because as was uh, previously mentioned, part of the purpose of having a redevelopment plan is it really facilitates uh, the sale of city-owned property. So that's another consideration we took into account when drafting these, these boundaries. Okay, I should have started from the bottom of the chat and worked my way up. Uh, sorry about that. Um, 
I, I don't see any more specific questions. I do appreciate um, Vicki Quates Ferris's comment. With the increase in density and traffic, my hope is we continue to look at improving traffic flow, uh, walkability, and other modes of transportation. So residents and visitors um, can visit the businesses and other amenities surrounding the area. I agree. <laughs> 100% uh, agree, Vicki. Um, so Willie asked, what can we do to explore a, site ex a slight expansion of the redevelopment boundary to the south? Kelly? Can I, can I mention that? Uh, the reason I'm asking is, I believe if you go one block further south, it's Blondo. And the city has uh, their development as well as the Fairdale uh, Senior Village is would be in captured there. And then if to the right of it, um, the development that Annette mentioned, the land to the south of, of the other building on the east side of 24th Street, that lot would be included. I don't see uh, Stan Roan, Pastor Roan on, but I know his, his property is also along Blondo. Uh, I don't know for sure. Just, but just thinking about that expansion might include some additional open land that could be a part of the overall plan. But they're owned, the property is owned by OEDC and uh, Pastor Roan, so that might be a question for them. Yeah, I agree, Willie. That's always been our intent um, as we continue to expand the Fair Deal Village Marketplace slash Urban District. It's always included that lot that sits south of Custom Tile next to Pastor Rome's church. Okay, thank you for the comment. Um, and we'll definitely take that into consideration. It's not the first time we've heard that. Um, Cheryl is asking, what is being done to get more communication out to the community regarding all these great projects? Um, well, that sounds like a great question for the property owners um, and, and developers. Would anyone like to speak a little bit to that? Anyone on the call still? I don't have anything specific to say, but I think that's one of those leading questions. I think we should do a lot more to get these projects out to the community. And I, I for one, am happy to work with anyone to, to you know, amplify that message and get the word out. And this is Annette again. OEDC updates its website about once every quarter. And um, as we wrap up, uh, our conversations regarding zoning and free cladding. We'll have more information on our website, particularly about our initial thrust into doing the middle income workforce housing projects. This is Cheryl Weston. And um, the reason why I bring that question up is because I get a lot of texts and emails and so forth that all of a sudden, all we know is that something's happening. And um, I know there may have been public input into the Forever North project, but that was some time ago. What people are saying now is um, it's like the community is just moving, but it's not really considering whatever input. And it's not so much as that they're opposed to this because many of these are great projects, but it's all of a sudden you come down the street and this is being done and nobody knows what or you get a lot of misinformation out um, in the community. And after hearing and seeing more of the projects, um, I think it's giving a bad image. And so that's the reason my question is, what can you do to get more information out, correct information, so that you have community support and instead of rumbling? Um, a quarterly website, Maybe good, but how many people know that we need to go to that particular website? Um, a lot of this is right on the front of 24th Street that you're doing. So there should be some kind of way with all the um, great businesses and the minds 
that are doing this project should take that more into consideration because that is a big problem. And many people say, well, we can't do anything about it. And they just keep doing this to our community. But there's a lot of very good projects that I think are gonna be beneficial. Um, and the other part, which I did not put into the chat, um, a lot of the middle income, middle housing is, feels like you're moving them out. Um, there's things to address the affordable housing, um, which is based on a lot of income. But what about the middle, the ones that aren't able to be in that, you know, and I use the kind of expression, and I don't mean it disparagingly, is that are just not poor enough. They're working, maybe they're um, not working at a sufficient amount of job to be able to get the $400,000 home or something. But it seems like a lot of the projects, the housing projects, um, are missing out on that middle housing uh, you know, individuals. So I hope that you would take that into consideration and do more. I did hear Pastor Lassiter say that I believe some of those will address some of their project, but that is a lot needed too. Because if we're going to change the image of our community and housing, we cannot continue to have a lot of um, rental property or a lot of uh, low income, affordable housing is the word now to use. So I just wanted to make that comment. I didn't put it in the chat. Hey, Cheryl, this is CNN from the landing. I'm going to chime in because I agree with you. Um, and I am going to offer to um, chat chat with you and really whoever else you think would need to be included in that conversation. Um, our disposition of properties is probably going to occur. It's not going to be in the short term, but it will be, um, you know, probably towards after the plans are developed and after we've identified those parcels that are gonna be available to the community, community users. But I mean, the interest of the land bank is to go all in in making sure that the um, specifically district two community knows that these, these are opportunities that are available for that. And I think that your reach and several, many of the other people on this call have that same reach. I think, um, I think we could really benefit from some of your advice and welcome you to that conversation, at least related to our project. Thank you. Thank you everyone for the thoughtful comments um, and responses. And uh, this is really incredible. Um, We've got uh, just a few minutes left. Any other questions before we let everyone have 10 minutes of their night back? Yeah, one question, just because I, I like to, you know, uh, make meetings last a lot longer and that sort of thing. Um, uh, I know I saw it mentioned earlier, but I didn't read it in the chat. Are you all going to um, have this PowerPoint available um, and send it out? Great question. Yes. Um, so this uh, PowerPoint with the edits of the slides that were left out, there were just two of them. Um, the recording of this and the questions like and this chat will be put together and emailed to everyone uh, whose email address we have. And if you're in this chat, it means you registered. We have your email address. So you can expect that. We will also be putting it on our Facebook page. We will be putting it on the city planning website. Um, and if there's another place that you think we need to put it that we have not let yet listed, we're open to that too. Just wanted to follow up on a question you may have touched on already, uh, Kelly, um, but, and I think Autumn is on, the process for uh, purchasing city lots or property. Uh, will that be spelled out again as this plan moves forward. So as you mentioned, some of those community developers and others that are interested in possibly purchasing a lot, doing a development, uh, maybe even pooling resources to purchase something or develop, uh, just wanting to make sure that those folks have an opportunity to, to be engaged in the, in the purchasing of property or lots.
Autumn is definitely better equipped to answer that question. So I'm gonna give her a second to see if she is around and can unmute and answer that question. If not, I can I can get you this, this far there probably. I was gonna say, I know Autumn's on uh, parent duty tonight. Yeah. So. All right. You can probably so, go ahead, yeah. Kelly. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, and then Bill, who is also more equipped to answer this question than I am, has audio issues right now. So um, the best answer to this probably is understanding this is a question. We can put this in the, the list of questions we've received tonight, and she can give you the full, comprehensive, correct answer, because I don't want to botch any. I don't want to mess anything up. Um, but the city does have some properties. Um, they contact, contact Autumn with letters of interest. Um, on some properties, we issue competitive uh, requests for proposals for them, like the Native Omaha building. That's what the process was there. And we received proposals um, and saw uh, evaluated those to see who's the best fit uh, for, for taking ownership of that building over. On other properties, it's not as formal as a process. Uh, people submit a letter of interest that is evaluated. Um, and then if it's, it's a reasonable um, proposal that seems like it can move forward, then it starts, Autumn will start walking that through the process. So like I said, I can't get you very far in that answer, but we can get Autumn to type up a full uh, full response and we can send it out along with everything else Mariana mentioned to everyone who's who's registered for the event. Thank you, Kelly. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, with that, I just wanna thank everyone um, unless I missed one more question. I'm sorry, I missed that one, Lily. But I'll give it a second. There are also several plans west of Highway 30, like Ohio area surrounding Miami Heights. Uh, Donnell, is that a, I'll reach back out to you, Donnell, and ask you for more information about that. Um, that was a reference to the middle, to the middle housing. Um, oh. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, there's there's more development. Obviously, this middle housing is coming more to a head. I think people realize um, me being one of those people now currently living, you know, 80th and Sorensen, you know, you know, desired to purchase in Miami Heights. But, you know, due to the to the population and um, population of the housing down there, I haven't been able to move down there. So, I mean, I think there's several others like me, young professionals that you know, won't meet any income requirements, but desire to live in that area. Um, so yeah, you know, it may be taking a stab into the dark, but yeah, I think the developing this middle income housing to bring up the area is something that, you know, we all can get together and start looking at. Absolutely, absolutely, all right. That I really appreciate your feedback, everyone's feedback. Um, again, this is really incredible. I think this is a great start for a, uh, or a continuation of a great community conversation. Um, yeah, everyone enjoy your Thursday night. Please don't hesitate to reach out for me to me if you have any questions or concerns, but look for uh, an email from me with some lots and lots of information. Hope everyone has a great night. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Great session. Appreciate it. Thanks for all the work putting it together. Yeah. Thanks for all the information. Thank you.